Hayes got the green light. He swings and torches one to dead center field. Swung on line to left center field. That's a base hit. Two runs will score. Ground ball up the box. Tucker dives, spins around from his knees. What a play by Cole Tucker. The 2-0 grounded down the third base side. Diving stop by Hayes. Gets to his feet, throws across. He got him. He delivers. Breaking ball right down the middle. Strike three called. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Swung on, ground ball, base hit right field. This game is over, and the Indians win again. Will Craig is fouled out, struck out, and grounded out. The pitch to him. Swung on, there she goes, deep to left field. That ball's way back, and that ball is gone. It's a game-winning home run. It's a triple-A debut for righty James Marvel. Nine and five, a 3.16 ERA at double-A Altoona. Was an Eastern League All-Star when he got promoted. The 25-year-old from San Francisco, he was a 36th round pick of the Pirates back in 2015 out of Duke. There's only 40 rounds in the draft, but Marvel has been a steal. The numbers that he's put up, he won 12 games last year, nine the year before at High A Bradenton. He's been very, very good in the Pirates' chain, climbing the ladder steadily. His numbers with Altoona got even better as the season wore on. He ended his curve tenure pitching at least seven innings in four consecutive starts, not allowing more than two runs, winning all of them. In fact, he won five starts in a row before his promotion. Marvel ready to go in his AAA debut. Game two of the doubleheader, the Indians trying to sweep it. For first pitch in game two, here's Howard. Andrew, thank you very much. And the Mud Hens swept a doubleheader from the Indians in Toledo on June the 8th. And the Indians trying to return the favor. As mentioned, they won the first game 4-3. to three. Jacob Robson stands in the first pitch of the second game. Fastball down the middle for a strike. Marvel throws a fastball, both the two and four seamer. A curveball and a changeup. And here is his windup and his one strike pitch. Outside, and that's a ball, one and one. Robson, a left-hand hitter, went 0 for 3 in game one of the doubleheader. The Indians play him in a shift. Marvel delivers. Swung on, ground ball wide of third against the shift into left field base hit. So he just poked it the other way to the left of Key Brian Hayes, the third baseman, and Robson starts off the nightcap with a hit to left. And that'll bring up Dawell Lugo. Right hand batting third baseman who had two hits and three at bats. A run scored and a run batted in in game one of the twin bill. A two run double by Kevin Kramer in the fifth inning turned the first game around and the Indians won it four to three. Fastball strike call knee high inside corner and the Indians in the top of the six with some great defense. Terrific plays by both Kramer at second and Hayes at third. Pablo Reyes made two excellent plays in center field earlier in the game. And a fastball golfed in the air to short right field. Here comes Shuck. The right fielder's there, and he's got it. One man out. Robson back to first base. Eric Wood playing first. Kevin Kramer at second. Jake Elmore is the shortstop and Key Brian Hayes at third base. Darnell Sweeney in left. 
Jason Martin in center, J.B. Shuck in right. Christian Kelly catching, and James Marvel pitching. And the batter is Willie Castro. And a fastball is low ball one. Castro had shortened up as if to bunt. One on and one out top of the first. You wouldn't look for that. Infield DP depth. Outfielders around to the left. The right-hander looks in. Robson with a lengthy lead. Throw over. He's back standing. Eric Wood holds him aboard. Brewers won Pirates nothing at the end of four in Pittsburgh. And again, Robson leads, and again, a throw over, not in time. Marvel's fastball has been sitting at 90 miles an hour. Here's his stretch. Robson with that lengthy lead. There he goes. Pitch swing and a miss. Throw to second in the dirt. Tag out at second base. Elmore dug it out and tagged him. Two to six on the put out. Well, he got a good jump, but it was a quick throw by Kelly, as you said, in front of the bag, though. But Jake did a nice job to scoop it cleanly, squeeze it, and slap the tag on. Robson leading with his left foot. Bang, bang, play. Tagged him high on the leg. He might have snuck his foot in there, but well, I don't know. From that angle, though, it looked like they got him right before he got to the bag. Two men out, bases empty. The 1-1 pitch. Pulled on the ground, foul right side. One and two. And the first look at it, it looked as if he had gotten his foot in there. But no replays in the minor leagues. Our motto is the game must go on. One and two. Marvel winds and pitches. Breaking ball pulled on the ground of the second baseman's left. Kramer's got it. The flip on to Woods. Side retired at the end of a half inning. Toledo nothing. The Indians coming to bat. James Marvel getting a caught stealing to help face the minimum in the top of the first in that AAA debut tonight. It's a veteran, though, that he opposes, Tim Adelman. Making his eighth start of the year in Toledo, three and two, a 3.03 ERA with these hens. He's gone seven innings in back-to-back -back outings, although those were in double A with double A Erie. Got bounced out of the rotation just temporarily. His last start with the hens came back on June the 18th, a start that he won against Lehigh Valley. But Adelman, 43, 43 career big league games, 127 career minor league games as well. Last pitched in the bigs in 2017 in Cincinnati. And Jason Martin will lead off against him. Jason's been swinging the bat very, very well. Had the day off in game one of the doubleheader. And Cole Tucker, who has the day off or the game off in the nightcap, played the first game, will coach first. A backpedaling first base coach. Now he's ready to go. The pitch to Martin. High and away, fastball, ball one. One ball, no strikes. And this one's outside, another fastball, ball two. Dustin Peterson playing first, Pete Cosme at second. Willie Castro at short, Dowell Lugo at third. Jacob Robson in left, Danny Woodrow in center, Mikey Matsuk in right. Here's a swing and a miss at a fastball. Cade Skovic catching. And on the mound, as Andrew told you, Tim Adelman. And the 2 1 pitch to Martin over the inside corner, Bell tied. Key Brian Hayes on deck. And the 2-2 pitch. Low for ball three. Adelman delivers. 
Swing and a miss, and Jason chased a high fastball, strike three. One man out. Here is Key Brian Hayes. Right hand batting third baseman also played. Third base batted second in the first game. Had a great game, a double and a single, two runs scored, a great play at third base. He takes high and tight ball one. One ball, no strikes. They play him straight away. Adelman delivers. High for ball two, two and oh. And the 2 0 pitch. Swung on. He had a big cut, fouled it back, and out of play. Strike one, two and one. The Indians won the first game of the doubleheader, four to three. And a fastball hit in the air, right side, foul, and out of play. Two and two. Adelman sets and pitches. A little bit inside. Fastball, ball three. So his second straight 3 2 count. He pitches. Swung on, lined to left field off the end of the bat. Robson hustling, hustling, makes the running catch, moving toward the line. And there are two outs. And now Kevin Kramer. Kramer, left hand batter, made an excellent play in the sixth inning of game one and had the big hit, a two run double in the fifth inning, which turned a 3 2 deficit into a 4 3 lead. The breaking ball high and away, ball one, one and up. And there's a foul back on the screen, one and one. Trayvon Robinson on deck. Adelman with a stretch. He delivers. Swinging him a foul back on a changeup. One and two. Two outs. Space is empty. The Hens and Indians scoreless in the bottom of the first. The right-handers pitch. Foul back on the screen. The count holds at one and two. Adelman stretches and pitches. Fastball is low ball two, two and two. And a fastball golfed in the air foul left side out of play count holds two and two. Time call. Kramer right on top of that plate. 2 2 pitch. Off speed and outside, and Adelman has his third 3 2 count of the inning. He's gotten the first two men. And he delivers. Swung on a little dribble along the first baseline. Fair ball. Adelman's got it. And he will tag Kramer out, one unassisted. 
Three up, three down at the end of one. Toledo nothing, Indianapolis nothing. We move to the top half of the second inning. The Mud Hens nothing and the Indians nothing. And Ronnie Rodriguez will lead off. He is the designated hitter. He played second base in game one. Club to two run homer to left center. James Marvel in his triple A debut. Wines and pitches. Fastball swing and a miss strike one. Mudhen's got a leadoff single from Jacob Robson in the first but he was caught stealing. Fastball and a very close pitch that was a pitcher's pitch but set a little outside by the plate up. Rich Grasa the one one delivery. Swung on, popped up to the right side. Short right, Kramer back, backpedaling. He one hands it. One man out. And now Dustin Peterson, first baseman, went 0 for 3 in game one, was robbed by Kramer on a good play up the middle. Kramer went far to his right. That was in the sixth inning. And amazingly enough, he got plenty on the throw going against the grain. Carrying toward the outfield. Fastball fouled off. Strike one, 0 and 1. One out, no one on top of the second. Hens and Indians scoreless. Indians won the first game of the doubleheader, 4 to 3. Fastball high, and that's a ball. 1 and 1. The 1 1 pitch. Swing and a foul back on the screen. 1 and 2. Marvel delivers. And he got him. Strike three call. Breaking ball inside corner. Bell tied. And Peterson caught looking, and there are two away. Uh, Peterson looking back out at Marvel. That ball had some late break, although he's now turned around saying something to Rich Grassa. It started up near his eyes and then kind of took a downward spike and then moved a little bit over the plate, too, to grab that inside corner. Really nice pitch to get the strikeout. So two away. Here is Mikey Mato. Right-hand batting right fielder. Pitches low ball one. One ball no strike center fielder Martin in right center. And a fastball high and tight ball two. And the count is two and oh. And the right handers pitch. Hit in the air foul right side out of play strike one. And a fastball fouled back on the screen strike two. Here's the 2 2 pitch. And a breaking ball, swing and a miss. He struck him out. Side retired, three up, three down at the end of one and one half. Toledo nothing, tribe nothing. Bottom half of the second inning, and Trayvon Robinson leads off. The designated hitter and the switch hitter will bat left. The hands in the Indians scoreless. Indianapolis won the first game of the doubleheader four to three. 
Brewers won Pirates nothing four and a half and a breaking ball a little outside and the hens thought that bell tie pitch was a strike. And the 1 0 pitch swing and a miss at a changeup big cut. And the right hander Adelman pitches swinging a high fly ball foul out of play left side. The Indians went down in order in the first inning and Adelman went to three and two on each of the first three hitters. He got them all strike out fly out and a ground out but he went to three and two on each one that's living dangerously. And a breaking ball swing and a miss. He struck him out a pitch around the ankles. That was a one two pitch. Here's Eric Wood. Eric playing first base in this game. Will Craig played first base in the first game. Eric did not play in game one. And a fastball hit in the air to deep right field. That ball's way back. And that ball is off the wall. Uh, no, it is. Wait a minute. Let's wait for the call. We hadn't gotten a call from the umpire. He didn't syndicate safe or home run. Wood standing at third base or in play. Well. <sighs> The first base umpire Adam Beck did not indicate safe meaning in play or now saying ground rule double and here comes Brian Esposito. So it's a ground rule double and again we were waiting for some kind of indication. I think what he's saying is that someone had maybe leaned over the railing and touched it but I didn't think that was clear at all. And that's what Brian Esposito is checking on because obviously that's an extra 90 feet and with one out already could be big big into getting that run home. I think you might be right because Rich Grasso was not indicating in play meaning he'll give a safe sign meaning the ball's in play. He wasn't indicating home run either. He put his hands up over his head maybe indicating hey that's a ground rule double. So I think you're right. We're expecting to see either a home run call or a safe call meaning it's in play. We didn't get either and as Andrew said he was indicating double. And Darnell Sweeney the batter. And he takes it low ball one. One ball no strikes. We're in the bottom of the second game two of the doubleheader. The hands and Indians scoreless Eric Wood going the other way. And a fastball is low for ball two two and oh. And a changeup is a little outside. Ball three, three and zero. Oh. Adelman sets and delivers. He turns him loose, hits it in the air, foul left side, out of play, right in front of the Coors Light Cove. So the three zero pitch is fouled, and it's three and one. Adelman looks in and stretches. Wood leads away and a pickoff play at second and oh he's safe and that was close. Castro sneaking in behind him. Wood did not slide or dive back into the bag. He went standing and the hens thought they might have gotten him. It was very close. The right hander stretches. 
and delivers. Swung on, pulled on the ground, into right field, base hit. Wood rounding third, heading home. Here comes the throw to the plate. It is not in time. And on the high throw, Sweeney goes to second. Single to right, RBI. The throw was too high to be cut off. Matuk missed the cutoff, man. Sweeney saw that and alertly went to second base. So you have another man in scoring position. The Indians lead 1-0. And that could turn out to be a big play, too. And Matuk's a veteran player. He threw it over... Peterson's head, nothing Peterson could do. It came skipping in. Jake Elmore swings and misses. They had no chance to get Eric Wood at the plate, but the cutoff man was missed, and it cost the Hens now. Instead of a man on first, there's a man on second with one out. Elmore playing shortstop. 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Outside fastball, strike two. Adelman stretches. Sweeney leads at second. 0-2 pitch. Hit in the air, short right field. Mato comes in. He's there, and he makes the catch. And he throws and misses another cutoff man. He threw it way high, and Lugo, Castro couldn't cut it off, and Lugo had to go down the left field line to get it. So... Sweeney was not going to try to go to third on that play, but another cutoff man missed. Two away in the batter, J.B. Shuck. Didn't play in the first game, playing right field in this one. Adelman stretches. Sweeney leads at second. The right-handers pitch. Line to right center, and it's in there. Base hit. Here comes the throw in. And it's very softly thrown to nowhere. And coming in to score is Darnell Sweeney. Matuk got that ball on a hop. I thought he was going to try to catch it. He didn't. He got it on a hop. And I figured he'd fire home. And instead of doing that, he just lobbed the ball in between first and second base to nobody. It's a single to right RBI for Shuck. Scoring Sweeney. And it's 2-0 Indians. And the batter is Christian Kelly, and he takes low ball one. I'm not sure if there would have been a play at the plate, but the throw came in, and he scored. Shuck leads away. He'll try to steal a base now and then. Here's a swing and a miss. One and one. Indians leading two to nothing. And a fastball is a strike at the knees. One and two. Adelman stretches. Shuck leads. And a breaking ball outside and in the dirt, dug out by Skovic. And the count's two and two. The right, he stretches. And a fastball hit foul to the right side, out of play. It holds it two and two. Adelman stretches. Shuck leads. And a fastball is in at the knees. Strike three. Inning over. Damage done. At the end of two in game two. Indians two. Hens nothing.
We go to the third inning of game two of the doubleheader. The Indians leading 2 0. They won the first game of the doubleheader 4 to 3. Here with the action, Andrew Kappas. Thanks, Howard. James Marvel gave up a leadoff single to start the game to Jacob Robson, but a caught stealing really lifted him in that first inning. Retired Lugo and Castro to follow, and then in a dominant second frame, he got a weak pop up and a couple of strikeouts. So he's faced the minimum through a pair. This game's set for seven, as we mentioned, twin bill. Danny Woodrow will lead off a left handed hitter, wears number eight on his back, a 260 hitter. Marvel from the third base side of the rubber. First pitch. Fastball that misses outside ball one. Marvel's got a bit of an old school delivery. He kind of stutter steps with that right foot and bounces the glove with the ball in hand up and down a couple times before picking the leg up and then just comes straight down plateward. Not a whole lot to the delivery, even from the full windup. As there's the kick in the 1-0. Fastball taken on the outside corner, a strike, one and one. Woodrow in game one, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. DH'd in game one, he's in center here, the 1-1. Swung on and dribbled foul off the end of the bat. Third base side, not quite enough to get to the dugout. A bat boy's got to go retrieve it. One ball, two strikes. Woodrow, one of these speedster outfielders for Toledo. Jacob Robson, another. Daz Cameron can fly. They got a lot of speed out there. 11 steals on the year. The 1-2. Swing and a smack foul, third base side, twisting out toward the seats near the Coors Light Cove. Falling just shy of it as the count holds it one and two. Woodrow out of Creighton. Not the first time he's played in the Circle City, assuming Creighton visiting Butler in the Big East. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball by Marvel, strike three. And Marvel striking out now his third batter in a row. One down here in the top of the third. Indians ahead 2-0. That was a good curveball from Marvel. And we're noticing that curve has some huge late bite to it. One away in the inning for Cade Skovic, the Toledo catcher. Skovic, a righty, wears number four, hitting 304 with the Hens. Most of his year at double-A Erie. The pitch. Fastball, misses in on his hands, ball one. Skovic got a little time with Toledo last year as well. High draft pick out of LSU, fourth rounder in fact in 2015. 1-0, misses outside, two balls and no strikes. He hit 346 in Erie with five homers and 11 doubles. Last year with the Hens, he was a 230 batter in 34 games. 2-0, fastball up and in, 3-0 the count now. And Christian Kelly calls time. He wants a new baseball from home plate umpire Rich Grassa. Marvel, right in the middle of the pitching rubber now, at the belt, the kick and the 3-0. Taken down the middle for a strike, 3-1. Fireworks show to follow here on a fireworks Friday. What a fun night it was last night. Unfortunately, not an Indians win. The 3-1, swing and a miss at a high heater. Full count now, 3-2. and two. Had the Indians fireworks show and then the downtown show shortly after and a sold-out crowd of over 14,400 with us. They nearly saw the Indians pull it out. Jason Martin hit a two-run homer in the ninth to cut it to one, but Indians couldn't get another. 3-2, a hard grounder back up the box into center field, a base hit. Gets to Jason Martin rather quickly. Skovic, his first hit of the series. And he's aboard with one out for Pete Cosma. Cosma, 31 years of age, a first rounder by St. Louis in 2007. Tulsa, Oklahoma native, hitting 232 with Toledo. Was not with the Hens, at least uh, on the active roster. He was on the IL when they were here a month ago or when we were there, I should say, a month ago. Couple of homers, 32 runs knocked in for him. The pitch, swinging a foul straight back to the screen, strike one. Cosmo with the Hens last year hit just 203, but he also got 27 games in the bigs. Actually hit better last season with Detroit, 217. 341 career big league games, mostly with Detroit in St. Louis. 
a 215 batter in the show. Runner at first, one out. Indians ahead, 2 0 here in the top of the third. One strike pitch to Cosma. Breaking ball misses over but low, 1 and 1. Marvel pitched collegiately at Duke University. We mentioned a late pick, 36th round. Only 40 rounds in the first year draft. 1-1. One, one. Fastball. Looked like he caught the knees. It's a little bit low, says Rich Grasso. Two balls and a strike. That was the 1,087th overall pick. Out of high school, he was a 37th rounder by the Twins. The 2-1 pitch. Fastball, a little bit inside. Three balls and a strike. Well, Marvel falling behind. He fell behind Skivik, now behind on Cosma. Three and one the count. Three one, a chopper to the third base side, but that'll go foul. Count goes full as uh, Hayes picks it up and fires a strike. What else is new? Right on the money to Wood, but it is a foul ball. So the count full three and two. Marvel, one reason why he fell so late, though, in the draft is he actually had another year of eligibility at Duke, and not just a year of eligibility going back for his senior year, but he was actually going back for his junior year. So he had a lot of leverage. You, know, you see sometimes juniors... Don't want to lose that leverage of going back to school so they sign. Or seniors, they don't have any leverage because they obviously can't go back. But because of his age, he was a sophomore when he got drafted. It's the 3-2. Swung on and driven out into right center field. Jason Martin got a great jump on that ball. Lee Chatter and he gave the catch. What a play by Martin. Got a great jump on that ball. And he just kind of lunged for it out in right center. He made it look effortless, but it was far from it. Makes the grab on the run, and he robs Cosmo of at least a double. Had J.B. Shuck backing up on the play, so more than likely not a triple, but either way, an extra base hit for sure. Instead, it's the second out of the inning. Two down is having to retreat back to first on that one, Skovic. Here's Jacob Robson, left-handed batter. The pitch, fastball taken low and outside, ball one. Marvel was limited to 25 innings his final year at Duke, his sophomore campaign. Started nine games his freshman year. Four and two with 373 ERA that campaign in the ACC. 1-0 and on Robson, the pitch. Taken up and away for a ball, 2-0. and And Marvel will be right at home when we head to Durham in the middle of August. We stay right by campus. More than likely, we'll ask him, but he's probably pitched at the DBAP or at least been in uniform there. Duke plays a decent amount of home games where Durham, the Bulls plays. The 2-0 chopped foul, first base side for a strike, 2-1. and one. Well, Marvel, interestingly enough, has been behind every hitter but the leadoff man, Woodrow. He's behind Robson here. Two balls and a strike. Infield shifted to the right. It's just a little lob toss over. Skovic, not a threat to run. He was only about a step off the bag. Being held on, though, by Eric Wood. Kramer not quite out in deep right field, but that deeper portion of the infield. It's the 2 1. Swung on a bouncer to the right side. Elmore picks it up on the first base side. A second sidearm throw to Wood in time, and that's out number three. Shift working perfectly. One out single by Skovic, but he's left aboard, and after two and a half, it's the Indians two, hence nothing. Game number two here at Victory Field of this twin bill. Tribe looking for a sweep, and they're in a pretty good spot here early on in game number two. A two-nothing lead, RBIs by Darnell Sweeney and J.B. Shuck in the second inning off Tim Adelman, who's back out there for the third. Top of the order, though, due up for the Tribe. Jason Martin will lead off. Martin struck out swinging his first time up. Did run the count full, though. J-Mart swinging a hot bat, especially since he is 
started to stand more straight up in the batter's box. Adelman will work off the third base side of the rubber. First pitch curveball fouled off the mask of Skavik for a strike 0-1. And how about that? Rich Grasso was going out in front of the plate to buy Skavik some time after he got hit on the foul ball. And Skavik just held up the mitt against the chest of Grasso and said, I'm fine. 0-1 the count on Jamar. The pitch. Breaking ball misses low and outside. One ball and one strike to the Indian center fielder. Martin Hayes and Kramer do up top of Brian Esposito's batting order. What a lift it would be for the club if they're able to sweep this twin bill. You know, a really tough road trip and a tough t start to the homestand yesterday. 1-1 one, one fastball up and away, and they say Martin swung. They appealed down to Blake Carnahan at third. He said he went through. Looked to me that J-Mart barely got the bat off his shoulder, but he's got a good look down there, although he's hearing it from third base coach Jonathan Schwind. He's asking about it right now. Well, J-Mart behind, the 1-2. Low and outside for a ball. Two balls and two strikes the count. Martin with that big home run last night. Boy, this place nearly erupted. Over 14,000 when he brought the Indians back within a run. He waves at this 2-2 breaking ball, though. Strike three. Fourth strikeout for Adelman, and there's one down here in the bottom of the third for Kebrian Hayes. Hayes had a great game one. Made a highlight diving play to throw a man out. Also had a couple of hits at the dish. Went two for three with two runs scored in game one. He takes a curveball low and outside, ball one. Key Bryan, a right-handed batter, the number two prospect in the Pirates system. Good to have him back off the IL, get activated yesterday. 1-0, fastball misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. You're going to get a gold glove defense. He's a two-time minor league gold glover. As, as we mentioned, you're not going up against, you know, 15 other guys like you are in the bigs. It's the 2-0, breaking ball low, 3-0. You're going up against all 160 minor league teams. Granted, he got the best in the world up in the show, but in terms of sheer numbers, for Hayes to beat out and beat him out two years in a row, 3-0. Hayes got the green light. He swings and torches one to dead center field. Woodrow going back. He's at the warning track, and that ball's gone. Dead center field from Key Brian Hayes, a solo shot. It's 3-0 Tribe here in the third. His third hit of the doubleheader. And the Indians stretch their lead. It's now three here in the third inning. That ball was smacked, a 3-0 green light. One out solo blast from Hayes. Here's Kevin Kramer, one of the heroes from game one. Had the go-ahead two-run double as he takes a pitch outside, ball one. But he also had one of the best plays you'll see a second baseman make all year. Going far into left center from the first base side of the bag. Wasn't even in a shift to throw out Dustin Peterson. It's the 1-0 fouled back to the backstop strike one. 1-1 one one the count on Kevin. Of course, that play that we allude to on robbing of Peterson, it looks rather ordinary in the box score, but certainly will go down as big, big play in the game considering the Indians were up just one. 1-1, one, one, up and away for a ball, 2-1. Had that two-run double in the fifth inning that made a 3-2 deficit turn into a 4-3 lead, and that was the final margin in game one here. Two and one, the count on Kramer, the pitch. Swung on and fouled back to the screen. It's now two and two. Key Brian Hayes, a home run to dead center field. Indians leading 3-0. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on a bouncer to the right side. Three hops, gobbled up by Cosma. Throw over to first in time for out number two. So Adelman bounces back after the home run to get the second out of the frame. And here's Trayvon Robinson, the Indians' cleanup man here in game two. Great article in the Indy Star a couple days ago. It was on the front page of the sports section about Trayvon and his journey here to Indianapolis. From his rise as a prospect with the Dodgers to 
Him going the indie ball route, thinking maybe the journey was over in baseball. It's the pitch to Robinson, misses low and outside for a ball 1-0, but now flourishing here in his first season with the Pirates chain. And he made he made the point that when he got traded to Seattle, and as you said, it was a very good article, he was rushed to the big leagues. The 1-0. Taken on the outside corner, a strike belt tie, 1-1. One one. He said he would have liked a little bit more time to get familiar with the new organization. And all he knew was, a, was the Dodgers, and especially as a high school pick, coming in 18 years old, showing up to camp. It's the 1-1. One Swung on and slap foul, third base side out near the second deck. Fan had it, then dropped it down to the lower bowl. He may get another shot, that's okay. One ball, two strikes on Robinson with two outs, the base is empty, but a solo shot by Hayes this inning has stretched the lead. It's now 3-0 as Robinson trying to stretch the inning. The one-two. Breaking ball, bounce to the right side, another one for Cosma. To his left, he's got it. Throw on to first to retire Robinson, and that's the inning. But on a 3-0 pitch to keep Brian Hayes, he goes to dead center in the shrubbery. Home run for him to stretch this tribe lead at the end of three. It's the Indians three, the Mud Hens nothing. Three nothing, the Indians in front as we go to the fourth inning here at Victory Field. James Marvel working now with a three run lead. Home run to dead center from Key Brian Hayes, stretching that lead in the bottom of the third inning. Marvel in his Triple A debut looking for the victory. Former Duke man will face Dawell Lugo to start the inning. Two, three, and four do up for Toledo Lugo, Castro, and Rodriguez. Just two hits on the board for the Hens. It's Marvel. That leg kick in the pitch. Fastball swing and a miss, strike one, 89 miles an hour, but well located on the outer half and down. Oh, and one the count. Lugo, some time in the big leagues this year with Detroit. There's been ample opportunity because of injuries up there. Injuries to former Indians. Both Josh Harrison and Jordy Mercer spending a lot of time on the IL. In fact, Harrison's still on it as the 0-1. Golfed at and missed the changeup. Strike two. Mercer just came off the IL, and that's why Ronnie Rodriguez got option back from the Tigers. Oh, and 2 the count on Lugo. Marvel, the pitch. Curveball drops in, strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Flashed a little bit of everything there. Fastball changeup, curveball, and he's got his fourth strikeout already. Marvel has looked very good in this AAA debut. He's not allowed a guy to get to second base just yet, although he got helped out by a caught stealing back in the first inning. But nonetheless, that big bender was a beauty. One away for Willie Castro, the switch hitting shortstop batting left. First pitch curveball nearly clipped the right thigh of him as he backed out of the way. Ball one. Marvel was 9 and 5 with Altuna with an ERA just above 3, 3.16. 1 0. Curveball drops in belt high for a strike, 1 and 1. He had gone at least seven innings in his last four starts, and he had won his last five. Last time he's tasted defeat was back on May 24th. And that was a crazy series for Altoona. It's the 1 1. Fastball swing and a miss for a strike, 1 and 2. When they were at Portland that weekend, you may remember the Indians took two of their starting pitchers the day they were going to start, or the night before. Cam View and Pedro Vasquez got flown in from Portland to Columbus because of turmoil in the big leagues. So the Indians losing their starters the night before. 1 2. Swung on and bounced to the right side. Three hops, gobbled up by Eric Wood. He'll take it to the bag himself. Out number two. Two up, two down for Marvel here in the top of the fourth, protecting a 3-0 lead. Here's Ronnie Rodriguez. Rodriguez popped up to second his first time up in the second inning, leading off that frame. Righty-righty matchup here for Marvel. Hands together at the belt. His pitch. Fastball taken... Just below the knees, ball one. New baseball for Christian Kelly. He'll exchange it out with Rich Grassa. We first saw Ronnie Rodriguez in Columbus, came up in the Cleveland system. 
He's had a couple of big league shots with Detroit since coming over to the Tigers as the 1-0. Breaking ball up and in. Two balls and no strikes. Very versatile player. He's played pretty much middle infield for Toledo, but he's a guy that can play the corner outfield spots and really center if you ask him to. He was all over the diamond when he was in Columbus as the 2-0. Swing and a miss. Late on a fastball, 2-1. 91 miles an hour from Marvel. Rodriguez has knocked in at least a run in every game in the series so far. He had a two-run homer in game one of the doubleheader. Two for five with an RBI last night. 2-1 is chopped foul behind the plate to the backstop on one hop. It's a strike. Two balls, two strikes. His game July 1st against Columbus at home was his first action with Toledo since April the 12th. He had been in the big leagues filling in for Josh Harrison and Jordy Mercer ever since then. And another late grant of time. And you hear a couple of boos as Marvel was already coming to the plate. He had to bail out of his delivery. Eduardo Vera got upset with that in game one when Blake Carnahan had a really late grant of time. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball misses low and outside. Kelly blocks it. The count's full. 3-2. and two. Base is clear with two outs. Indians ahead 3-0 here at the top of the fourth. James Marvel looking for his second 1-2-3 inning. If he retires Rodriguez, it would be the third time he's faced the minimum. Gave up a leadoff hit in the first, but with the benefit of a caught stealing, did face just three that frame. The 3-2 on the way. Rodriguez swings and pops it up. Right side of the infield, Eric Wood says, I got it. Wood underneath makes the squeeze, out number three. A strikeout, a ground ball, and a pop-up. A very good inning for Marvel as he sets him down, 1-2-3. And after three and a half, it's the Tribe three, hence nothing. Bottom four we go, a beautiful sunset. Just about wrapping up behind us on the third base side of the ballpark. Skyline starting to illuminate in the background here if you're looking at the field from behind home plate like we are high above the field in the broadcast booth. Alongside Howard Kelman, I'm Andrew Kappas, Sam Rumsa back in our Fox Sports 97.5 studios. Either Alex directing, uh, maybe Jordan, who knows at this point. Eric Wood, the batter, he'll lead off and takes a curveball low for a ball 1-0. and That's not Jordan Stapleton, the cook. No, no, oh, no, no. This okay. is Jordan Shue. Because uh, she's a very bright young lady. I don't know if she made her way up to the uh, press box there directing the telecast. 1-0 the count. The pitch to Eric Wood. Swinging a bouncer foul. Third base side just to the left of the bag. Eric nearly snuck that one down into the corner. But just out of the reach of Dawell Lugo there for a strike. One ball and one strike on Woody at first base tonight in game number two. Did not play in game one. Just missed out on his ninth home run of the year. You know, it's kind of shocking the way the Indians have clubbed home runs this year. It's the 1-1, a fastball that sails outside. Eric is actually second on the team in long balls despite not playing every day. Second to Will Craig's 17, so I mean, he's quite a bit away from Craig's, but still, nonetheless. 2-1. Misses low and inside 3-1, and one, although Cole Tucker is starting to gain ground on him. Remember early in the season, Eric hit that home run that hit the foul pole? Yeah. And I said something to him about that a few days ago, and he said, I've been living off that for a couple of months <laughs> now. i got to do something else. 3-1. <laughs> Fastball in the outside corner, strike 3-2. and two. Was a bit disappointed to see him not in the lineup on Canada Day on Monday. He homered on Canada Day in Columbus last year. He loves hitting in Huntington Park. He's parked one above the bleachers a time or two. 3-2, a pitch that sails outside, ball four. But as you so accurately pointed out, he got his work in coaching first base that day. <laughs> On the holiday. It's an MHS walk for health. So Wood will trot down to first base. He's been on twice, a double and a walk, and that's a good way to start the inning. Indians ahead 3-0, leadoff man aboard for Darnell Sweeney. Sweeney, an RBI hit to plate Eric Wood. Back in the second inning, that two-run frame. Then the Indians got another run in the third on Key Brian Hayes' solo shot to center. Pitch to Sweeney, big rip and miss through a fastball strike one. Adelman jumping out in front. Darnell looking down to get the sign from third base coach Jonathan Schwind. Busy couple of days for Schwindy coming up. Thrown to Josh Bell on Monday in Cleveland in the home run derby. It's the 0-1. Big swing and miss again. Strike two. It's always a joy to be around Jonathan Schwind. He's always upbeat. He's always positive, always energetic. 
And as you and I have talked about, we're real happy for him that he's going to get this opportunity. He's been practicing for the Derby because it's not your traditional, as we've talked about, you know, BP type setup as the 0 2 cut on and missed. Three straight swings through fastballs, and Sweeney down on strikes. Fifth punch out for Adelman. But the way that it works in the home run derby, you know, you don't have the turtle or the cage like you do at batting practice. You also have a catcher. You're not throwing to a guy during batting practice. But maybe the biggest adjustment is that you got to wait for the ball to land. Even if it's not going out of the ballpark or it does clear the wall, you got to wait for it to land to throw that next ball. Jake Elmore steps in. He swings and clubs one out in the left center field. Woodrow going back at the warning track, lunges after it, makes the grab. Boy, Elmore smoked that baseball, but Woodrow covered a lot of ground and on the warning track, just shy of the wall, hauled it in. Elmore thought he might have had a triple out of that if it would have rattled around, but Woodrow had other ideas. Out number two, and Wood was... Ready to score on that, had to retreat, get back to first base. And and based on listening to John Schwind in our pregame show a couple of days ago. Two outs in the inning for J.B. Shuck as they'll throw over to first to check on Wood. I'm not going to be stunned if Josh Bell takes a swing or two from the right side. He ba said, based on what he said. He said he wants to entertain the crowd yep. at progressive field there in Cleveland. Shuck swings and fouls it back to the screen strike one. Speaking of of practicing for the Derby, Christian Yelich today at PNC hit one into the Allegheny. It broke somebody's window on a boat. The police were called. Wow. Because <laughs> they thought somebody had broken into the boat. They saw the broken window, and then they found the baseball. <laughs> nope, it's just Christian Yelich. <laughs> oh, one. Swung on, and this ball driven out in the right center field. Woodrow racing back. Woodrow at the warning track, and he hauls in another one. Boy, if it wasn't for Danny Woodrow out there, it might be a 5-0 game. But he hauls in another to rob Shuck of a double and keeps a yet another run off the board. He saved at least two in that fourth inning. At the end of four, it's the Indians three, Mudhens nothing. We've traded in the sun for the moon here tonight at Victory Field. A long night at the park, a doubleheader. Indians winning game one. They're ahead in game two, 3 nothing as we go to the fifth. Back to the mic. Here's Howard. Andrew, thank you very much. And Dustin Peterson leads off for the Mud Hens. Uh, James Marvel in his AAA debut has been outstanding. First pitch, good. Chris breaking ball in at the knees, strike one. Peterson looked at strike three his first time up. Marvel's allowed two singles. He hasn't walked anybody. And a fastball a little bit inside. It's not as if. He has had a lot of three ball counts either. He's ahead of the hitters. The 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung on. He popped it up. Popped it up to the right side. Here comes Eric Wood, and the first baseman's got it. Fair territory, about 15 feet fair, halfway between home plate and first base. One away, and now Mikey Montuk. Struck out swinging his first time up. Right hand batter. Marvel winds and pitches. Fastball hit well to left center. Can anybody get there? And that ball is going to be in the gap for extra bases. Ma took into second with a double. Sweeney and Martin in pursuit. Neither man could get there. It's a one out double. It is only the third Toledo hit of the game. And the batter's Danny Woodrow, who struck out swinging his first time up. Left hand hitter, and we just saw what a good center field this man plays. He can go get that baseball. He made two excellent catches in the bottom of the fourth. And a fastball right down the middle at the knees, 89 miles an hour, strike one. Milwaukee ahead of the Pirates, 2 0. They're in the bottom of the seventh in Pittsburgh. 
And this one's low and he had shortened up as if to bunt. Now bunting with a runner at second and one out when you're down by three runs can be a good play. Because if you beat it out you bring up the potential tying run. Normally it's not a good play but if you're trailing by several runs it is. Marvel looks in. Time call. Ma took it second. One man out. The right he stretches. And delivers. And a breaking ball is grounded foul to the right side. One and two. And again the right hand is stretch. Mott took leads. Indians leading three nothing. Pick off play at second. They got him. How do you like that. Elmore snuck in behind him. Marvel to Elmore one to six and Mikey Mott took with his team down by three runs in the fifth inning is picked off second base. They picked him off. And the pitch swing at Emmaus breaking ball in the dirt. Strike three. Side retired at the end of four and a half. The Indians three. Toledo nothing. Bottom half of inning number five. The Indians ahead three nothing. Christian Kelly will lead it off. He's the Indians catcher. He'll be followed by Jason Martin and Key Brian Hayes. Hayes Kelly a right hand batter. Indians three runs four hits mud hands no runs three hits. Adelman's pitch fastball outside ball one. You know Howard you don't want to look too far ahead but. We're broadcasters. That's what we do sometimes. Yes, uh, we finished the season in Louisville on Labor Day. James Marvel has 63 pitches in five innings. The 1-0 swing and a miss, and that's the regular season, I might point out. But, yes, no, he's been terrific. And he, uh, he, he might be asked to finish this game. Only two more innings, obviously. Game set for seven. Sure, and he has not fallen behind hitters at all. He had one inning in which he did, but outside of that, Breaking ball, line drive, base hit center field. Lead off hit for Kelly. Marvel in six innings has allowed only three hits, hasn't walked anybody in the one extra base hit he gave up to Mikey Matuk. He took care of it by picking Matuk off. Now, if you're Doug Mankiewicz, the manager of the Hens, you're upset. You have a man picked off second when you're down by three runs. Jason Martin, the batter, he struck out swinging twice. And he swings a ground ball hit to second. Cosma to second one, on to first, not in time. Cosma to Castro to choke off the lead man. One away, Kelly a race, Martin aboard. And now Key Brian Hayes. Who's fly to left? And Homer. Throw over and Martin dives back safely. Key Brian homered on a 3 0 pitch to dead center field. Adam Frazier with a big RBI single for the Pirates. Breaking ball outside. 
And the Pirates are on the board and still batting in the bottom of the seventh. The Brewers ahead two to one. Martin a threat to go. Breaking ball low outside ball two. Two and oh. Martin leads. Adelman's pitch inside and off speed. Ball three. Change up missed. The Indians won the first game of the doubleheader four to three. They're ahead here three nothing. The count three and zero. Oh. And Hayes swings and grounds and foul. Last time up, he swung at a 3 0 pitch and hit it over the center field wall. This time up, he swung at a 3 0 pitch and tapped it foul. Throw over to first, Martin back. Kyle Funkhauser and Cam View the probables tomorrow. Game time, 7.05, victory field, the place to be. Martin running. Here's a fly ball, well hit center field. Woodrow going back, still going back. He makes an excellent one-hand catch, a step from the wall, and Martin has to run and scramble back to first base. That is the third fine play that Danny Woodrow has made in center field in the last two innings. Two away. And the batter is Kevin Kramer. Grounded out twice, 0 for 2. The right hander stretches and delivers. High ball one, one ball, no strikes. The right handers stretch and his pitch strike called knee high outside corner one and one. Indians leading three nothing. Here's a fastball swing and a miss strike two a pitcher away. And the count is one and two. Trayvon Robinson on deck. Adelman stretches and delivers. Martin's running. Pitch high. Throw to second. In the dirt. Not in time. Not a strong throw. And Castro had all he could do to prevent the ball from going into center field. So a stolen base for Jason Martin. Adelman stretches and delivers. Off speed, pitch outside, runner going, throw to third out. And that's not good with a runner at second and two out and a left-hand hitter up there. Two to five, Skovic to Lugo, and the inning is over. And at the end of five innings in game two, it is Indianapolis three and Toledo nothing. It's the top half of the six. The game's scheduled for seven. Here's Andrew. Indians ahead three nothing, Howard, and James Marvel in his triple A debut. Very well could go the distance. A lot depends, obviously, how this inning goes. His pitch to Cade Skovic taken for a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Toledo catcher leading off, 8-9-1 and one due up. And not great news out of Pittsburgh. It's the 0-1. Low and outside for a ball, 1-1. One and one. Brian Reynolds got hit by a pitch up and in by Josh Hader to load the bases. But an injury delay there in Pittsburgh. Did he have to leave the game? They're still tending to him, apparently. 
One and one the count on Skovic. Pirates down by a run, but they got the bases loaded. You just hope that Reynolds is okay. Is the 1-1 line foul. First base side out of play. One ball and two strikes on Skovic. Just 66 pitches right now. Marvel could go all seven tonight in this debut at AAA. The one-two. Breaking ball in the dirt. Blocked nicely there by Christian Kelly. Two balls and two strikes. Skovic here in game two. He did not play in game one. Line to hit his first time up to center field. He's one for one. Break even pitch on the way from Marvel. Breaking ball, hook foul. Third base side out near the Coors Light Cove. Just shy of it. Still two balls and two strikes on him. It looks like he stayed in the game, so they're loaded for Starling Marte. Pirates trying to come back in that one. Big, big series this weekend with Milwaukee. 2-2. Two -two. Swung on a bouncer to third. Moving to his left, Hayes. He's got it on two hops. Throw across. Sailed a little bit, but Wood able to bring it back out of the air. How many times all season has Key Brian Hayes made a high throw? Unfortunately, it was not extremely high, and they still got the out, but he rarely will do that. It might have been because he had a lot of time. You know, on those plays where it's bang, bang, he always throws it right on the money. And uh, not used to having the routine play. He's made some miraculous ones tonight. He's also homered to dead center. He nearly had another one in his last A.B. It was ran down, though. Pitch to Pete Cosma, taken for a strike belt high, 0-1. Disappointing end to that rally. Starling Marte popped up to first base. Pirates did get one, but they're still trailing 2-1 to one as they go to the eighth inning there in Pittsburgh. Oh one sails outside for a ball. They took out Brault after just four innings. 81 pitches. Three hits, one run, two walks. You know, he never had high pitch counts when he was here. 1-1 one, one. on the inside corner, a strike one and two. Oh, he exited with left shoulder discomfort. Uh-oh. That's not good. One and two, the count. One, two, a curveball outside. Two balls and two strikes. Well, you hope that checks out okay for Brault. You're at a time in the schedule where a lot of guys are getting put on the IL that may not normally get put on just because of the All-Star break. That's four days. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Curveball in the dirt. Strike three. Kelly missed the tag, so he'll fire down to Eric Wood to complete the strikeout. Six punch outs now for James Marvel, and there's two away. Now he has been absolutely phenomenal in this AAA debut. Three hitting Toledo right now. Another bender to get the strikeout. Started in the zone and then just dropped out of it. Bouncing into the mid of Kelly, who fired a clean strike. Two down, bases empty for Jacob Robson. He has singled and grounded a short, one for two. The pitch, a curveball for a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Oh, one curveball, a bouncer up the first base side. Marvel sprinting off the mound, picks it up, flips to first. They got him. One, two, three inning for James Marvel, and he very well may get a chance to go the distance in his AAA debut. What a play off the mound there to get the speedy Jacob Robson as that ball rolled up the line. One to three, and after five and a half, it's the Indians three, hands nothing. In what is essentially the eighth inning here in game two of the doubleheader. Tribe in front, 3-0. They'll look to add to their lead ahead of a decisive seventh frame. Indians looking to sweep a twin bill from Toledo after falling in the series opener yesterday. Kevin Kramer will lead off. Heart of the order due up for the Tribe. The pitch. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Strike one. Kramer 0 for 2 in game number 2, but he had the go-ahead two-run double that ultimately was the game-winning hit in game 1, and he also had one of the best plays you'll see at second 
Although when he made the throw, he was in shallow left field. It's the 0 1. Swung on and bounced foul on a curveball. Strike two. And the most impressive thing about that highlight reel play he made earlier was that he wasn't in the shift. Wasn't shifted to the left side, so he came all the way from the first base side of the bag to get to that ball in shallow left. And then fired a clean strike to Will Craig to get Dustin Peterson. 0 oh, 2. Swung on. This ball hit out in the air into center field. Sinking quickly. It's going to drop in front of Woodrow. A base hit. Lead off single for Kevin. He's one for three. And the Indians will start the inning off with a hit in front of Trayvon Robinson. Wasn't all that well, but just enough for Kevin. Kramer, who did not get retired in game one. He walked twice and had that double. There's Trayvon Robinson. We'll try to move him on up. Switch hitter batting left-handed. The pitch. Curve ball that swung on and hit out in the air in the left center, but you want to keep it away from Woodrow. He's over into the gap to make the catch, out number one. Woodrow just robbing the Indians of extra base hits. This game would have probably been busted open if it wasn't for Woodrow. They're back in the fourth inning. He robbed Elmore of a double and then immediately after robbed Shuck of a double. That was with a man aboard, so he saved two runs at least in that fourth inning. So that's why you're looking at a 3 nothing game instead of a 5 nothing game, or maybe more. Eric Wood, the batter with one out and a man aboard. Wood has walked and doubled here in game two. The pitch, swing and a miss. Got a little piece of it, but off the mitt of Kate Skovic for a strike, 0-1. Wood almost got that ninth homer out of here. First time up, hit off the top of the wall and came back in for a ground rule double. Kramer taking his lead at first, being held on by Peterson. 0-1 fastball, chop foul, third base side. Up into the seats, it took a wicked hop off the mound. Count 0-2. Man at first base with one out. Indians trying to salt this 3-0 lead. 0-2. Wood swings and bounces it to short. Two hops picked up by Castro. Throw to second for one. Relay to first, not in time. Cole Tucker makes a pretty good umpire, too. He, he signaled safe before the uh, call came in from Adam Beck, and he was right. That's an observant first base coach right there. Tucker getting game two off as Woody legs out the fielder's choice. <laughs> Tucker has fun no matter where he's at. And uh, even coaching first base, he's having a good time out there. Kramer retired at second, six to four. Two down with Eric Wood at first base now for Darnell Sweeney. Throw over to first to Chase Wood, back to the bag. Sweeney has singled and struck out, one for two with an RBI. Shifted slightly to the right. Here's the pitch. Sweeney takes it low and outside for a ball, 1-0. What a pretty modest lead being held on as the pitch bounces in front of the plate and then kicks back to the backstop. Wood at second, he'll take a big turn around the bag, but stop there. It's a wild pitch, and Wood able to scamper up an extra 90 feet. So he didn't have a big lead, but didn't need one. Count 2-0 and oh on Wood. Or rather, uh, on Sweeney with Wood now out at second base. Base hit here from Darnell would push that lead to four. Sweeney, a switch hitter, waiting on Adelman. The 2-0. Swung on and grounded hard to the right side. Moving to his right, Cosma picks it up off his back heel. Had a little more time to plant, but either way, throws out Sweeney, 4-3, to three, and that's the inning. Well, James Marvel will be back out for the seventh, trying to go the distance at the end of six. It's the Indians three, hands nothing. Okay, here we go to the seventh inning. The Indians three outs away from a sweep of the doubleheader. They won the first game 4-3, to three, and they lead this game 3 nothing. 
James Marvel, the big story in his AAA debut. He's allowed but three hits, has not walked anybody, and he has struck out seven. Dalwell Lugo leads off. He's flied to right and struck out. The right hander pitches. Breaking ball, a little bit low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. And the 1 0 delivery. Fastball bounced. It is fair. Backhanded beautifully by Hayes. He fires and he got it. What a play by Key Brian Hayes. Backhanding it along the line at third. Firing to Wood. Another gem by Key Brian Hayes. And now Willie Castro. He's grounded to second and grounded to first. He took a hit away. Key Brian Hayes is an outstanding third baseman. The pitch to Castro. Popped in the air, foul left side, and it bounces near the home plate area of the bullpen. The Indians, two outs away from a doubleheader sweep. Night game tomorrow, 7.05, and a day game Sunday, 1.35. Oh, one pitch. Swung on, ground ball hit to second. Kramer's got it. On to Wood. There are two away. So, the Indians one out away, and the batter, Ronnie Rodriguez, who's popped a second twice. Indians leading 3-0. And a breaking ball is in for a strike. Rodriguez went backing away. James Marvel. Working on a shutout in his triple-A debut, a three-hit shutout. And the 0-1 delivery. Fastball fouled back on the screen, 0-2. The Indian fans all pumped up. Marvel winds and delivers. Swung on, he popped it up. He popped it up near second base. Kevin Kramer's got it. That's all. That's a doubleheader sweep for the Indians. And James Marvel in his AAA debut in his seven-inning game throws a three-hit shutout. What a great night for the Tribe. The Indianapolis Indians win the first game 4-3. to three. And they win the second game, this one, 3 nothing. They right the ship with a doubleheader win. A great, great night at Victory Field for the Indians. The teams will play again. Tomorrow at 7.05. And then Sunday afternoon at 1.35. Then we'll have the All-Star break and resume in Columbus. So this was a terrific night for the Indians. Four to three win in the first game come from behind fashion. And a three nothing win in the nightcap. And the Indians needed a good night, and they got one. Okay, let's go to PA announcer. Every tribe win is a team effort, but there's always a McDonald's player of the game. Indians radio broadcaster Andrew Kappas is with tonight's star now. Well, thank you so much. We're with James Marvel. And who else would it be? I warned you, buddy. Who else would it be here in game two as a complete game effort, all seven innings. Kevin Kramer, a great game one, two as well. But uh, James here in game two went the distance in your triple-A debut, no less. You didn't waste any time. No, that, that feels good. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, guys. Um, 
Incredible job by Christian Kelly behind the plate tonight. My defense made some great plays. Key there in the last inning. Jason Martin there running one down. Um, yeah, this has been awesome. Seemed like you were really attacking the zone. You only fell behind a couple of guys really all night, and that was kind of a key to your success. Yeah, I mean, K Kelly was throwing them down. We were on a good rhythm all night and uh, just feeling good, trying to uh, let my defense work. These guys are incredible up here um, and just trying to get them the ball, and, uh, and it worked out. You, t you mentioned the great defense. Keep Brian Hayes a couple of plays at the hot corner. How about Kevin Kramer in game one just flashing the leather? It's got to be fun with those guys behind you. It's incredible. It's incredible. I've been, uh, I've been watching these guys from afar, and to be on the same field with them and, uh, and competing with them and, and sharing it with them, uh, it's, it's an honor. It's going to be a fun night for you. James Marvel, thank you so much. He's tonight's McDonald's player of the game. We'll send it back upstairs. Okay, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, James, and thanks for watching the Indianapolis Indians on Comcast. Indians post game extra is next on Fox Sports 97.5. I'm Howard Kelman with Andrew Kappas.